Hello, I'm Laura Cassidy from the American Chemical Society. Welcome to this media briefing from ACS Spring 2022. Women have many choices for birth control, ranging from pills to patches to intrauterine devices, and partly as a result, they bear most of the burden of preventing pregnancy. But men's birth control options, and therefore responsibilities, could soon be expanding. Today, scientists report a non-hormonal male contraceptive that effectively prevents pregnancy in mice without obvious side effects. We're joined today by Dr. Gunda Gyor and Abdullah al Noman from the University of Minnesota. Thank you for joining us. Female birth control pills have been available for decades. Why are we still waiting for a male pill? So there has been effort to develop a male birth control pill uh, by targeting the male sex hormone, the testosterone, because most female hormone uh, birth control pill works on the female sex hormones. But targeting male sex hormone leads to a lot of side effects, such as weight gain and depression, and also increased risk for cardiovascular diseases. And since men do not have to trade off between the pregnancy and the side effect, men are less willing to take a birth control pill that has the, such significant side effect. That's why we are targeting a non-hormonal pathway to develop a male birth control pill. To develop your non-hormonal male contraceptive, which protein did you decide to target and why? So we are really actually targeting uh, several, um, but this specific one uh, that we are reporting uh, now uh, is the retinoic acid receptor alpha. And uh, the reason we are um, uh, focusing on, on this particular one is that it has been known for a very long time that depriving male mice of vitamin A, uh, then they become infertile. And then furthermore, in order to really, um, <clears throat> um, I guess, think that you have a chance to develop a, um, a, a compound with the uh, effect that you would like to see, uh, what you do is you validate your target. And so uh, retinoic acid receptor alpha that we are targeting was validated through genetic knockout. And so mice um, that uh, do no longer have this particular receptor uh, become infertile and uh, otherwise they're healthy. And so that's very important also that you, I guess, um, knock out uh, the, uh, when you knock out the, um, the target that you see the desired effect, but that the mice are also viable and healthy. And that's the reason why we selected this particular target. Okay, and just as a follow-up question, this protein binds to vitamin A. Are there other receptors or proteins in the cell that also bind to vitamin A? Yeah, so there are actually three receptors. They're called alpha, beta, and gamma. And so we are um, uh, selectively targeting, uh, targeting uh, the aria uh, alpha protein. And how did you identify a compound that binds specifically to the retinoic acid receptor alpha? So to identify a compound that binds to retinoic acid receptor alpha, we usually exploit the mechanism the way uh, retinoic acid receptor alpha works. So as you can see in the video, when the uh, natural agonist for retinoic acid a receptor called retinoic acid, it binds, then the coactivator gets recruited. And after coactivator recruits, then the gene expression starts. So we put a luminescence producing gene, so downstream to the RAR alpha. So when a retinoic acid receptor um, binds to the natural agonist, then we get the luminescence. But if our compound, it inhibits the binding of retinoic acid, that will inhibit the production of luminescence. So that's the mechanism that we use a modified cell line, th those cell line that has retinoic acid receptor alpha, and that luminescence producing gene. But to check the selectivity, whether this compound also binds to the RAR beta and gamma, we have two other cell lines that express RAR beta and RAR gamma. So we want a compound that can only bind and show activity in retinoic acid receptor alpha producing cell, not in the beta and gamma producing cell. Okay, and I understand you use some computer modeling as well to um, identify this compound. Can you explain that? Yes, so we, uh, because the crystal structure of retinoic acid receptor alpha, beta, and gamma is available, and we know where the structural differences are, 
So we use computational modeling before making a compound to see whether it binds to RL alpha and whether it can also binds to beta and gamma. We usually triage the compound that can only selectively be predicted to be binding with retinoic acid receptor alpha. Okay, and what happened when you gave the compound known as YCT529 to mice? Yeah, so um, we conducted um, uh, a, um, a mating study. Um, male mice were given uh, the drug uh, every day, and they were together with um, female mice. And then um, we uh, observed uh, how many pregnancies took place. Uh, and so um, the, um, uh, uh, I guess initially, uh, you don't see an effect, uh, but uh, after we gave this uh, drug for uh, several uh, weeks, um, the pregnancies went down uh, and the efficacy was about 99%. So meaning it was a very, very high uh, effect. Um, and so that is uh, really very promising. And um, if you think about the female birth control pill, so that's um, you know, similar uh, in, in terms of uh, efficacy that you see uh, in the female birth control pill. Of course, you have to be uh, careful uh, with this analysis. These are mice and they are not humans, but uh, nevertheless, the um, effect was um, uh, very, very uh, uh, promising. And I should mention that the studies were done by our collaborator, Deborah Wolgemuth at Columbia University. And did the mice have any side effects that you could see? No, no side effects whatsoever, which is very, very good news, yeah. You mentioned that the mice uh, had to take the compound for several weeks. How many weeks did it take for it to become effective at preventing pregnancy? So we tested them, our collaborator tested the mice after four weeks. So after giving the mice the drug for four weeks, then they started taking the sperm count and also let the mice mate with female mice and counted the number of offspring they produced. I see. Okay, then how long did it take the male mice to become fertile again after they stopped taking the drug? After about two weeks, they started to become fertile again, but after four weeks, these mice become completely fertile. When do you plan to conduct human clinical trials on this non-hormonal male contraceptive? So you uh, uh, need to know that we, of course, licensed uh, this um, compound uh, to a um, startup company, Your Choice Therapeutics. Uh, they have been uh, conducting, conducting additional uh, studies. Uh, and as you know, before anything can go to a clinical trial, you have to get a permission by the Food and Drug Administration to carry out uh, this clinical trial. And so these, um, uh, the documentation and the application uh, is uh, currently being prepared um, uh, <clears throat> by the company. And they're hoping that maybe um, Q3 or Q4 this year, um, maybe the clinical uh, trial could start, which is an incredible speed, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we hope for the best, um, but one never, um, I guess, no, but um, uh, we, we hope to be in the clinic this year. That's exciting. And if all goes well, when do you think the male contraceptive could be available to the public? Yeah, so of course, this uh, takes a long time. As you well know, uh, as I said, uh, FDA application, uh, clinical trial, um, and uh, clinical trials go through several phases. Of course, uh, foremost, um, we're all concerned about safety. Uh, so, you know, it, it, I want to be optimistic. I want to say if we can start a clinical trial this year, maybe five years would be a, a time frame that might be achievable. Usually it takes a lot longer, but uh, if everything works out well, perhaps um, we um, can be faster. Great. And what are your next steps for this research? So for the next step, I'm trying to make uh, other backup compounds so that could have much better potency and uh, be better property as a drug candidate than our current compound. Also, we are trying to make second generation retinoic acid receptor uh, antagonist that can not only antagonize RAR alpha, they can also inhibit the activity of RAR gamma. 
that is another retinoic acid receptor, which is also validated as a target for male contraception. And what I'm hoping is that if we could hit both target at the same time, we could get the contraceptive effect at a much lower dose. All right, and what take home message would you like to leave with viewers? So I wanna maybe quote uh, the um, <clears throat> male contraceptive initiative. And so um, what, what, what they're uh, promoting is um, uh, reproductive choice for all. And so I think that is really, really important that uh, you know, female, um, <clears throat> uh, the female has of course many opportunities uh, to control their fertility, but uh, for males is so limited and so if we can expand uh, the choices for men and for couples, I think that would be really wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Georg and Noman for sharing your research with us. Be sure to check out our other media briefings for ACS Spring 2022, which will be posted throughout the meeting at acs.org slash acsspring2022 briefings.